Hello, Evergreen. Hey, everybody. It's uh, Wednesday night, and we are working our way through uh, spiritual gifts. And uh, last week, we dealt with faith, and uh, we didn't get through Hebrews 11 at all. We so took a, a detour. Settling into faith a little bit yeah. more. But then on Sunday, we preached on Hebrews 11. And so I had put for Wednesday night that it was part one. But then I think part two might have been on Sunday. So then I was trying to figure out, well, do we move on uh, or do we stay with faith? And I think probably let's stay with faith because this faith. Is part three then, but not a guaranteed like three of three. We don't we don't quite know. And I, I just want to say we're actually doing this from a place of faith. And I treated you pretty badly today. And so even coming to this place and coming before you all and talking about faith, we're actually doing in faith because we're, we're coming from a, a tough place. Mm -hmm. We're reconciling and dealing with stuff, but I want to grow in my faith. Yeah. Well, I think it's one of the things um, that in ministry we do and uh, you know, everybody has jobs in this sense. I'm not trying to put it in that way, but you have a job that you got to go do regardless, right? Well, sometimes even in pastoring, uh, we don't always do things based on, oh, I really want to do this. Sometimes it's like, regardless of how I feel, I got to preach on Sunday or I have to have this meeting with someone and, and it becomes a have to. Uh, but what you learn I mean, you can get disgruntled on it, but if you also say, Lord, you know, help me, you learn that God can do things mm -hmm. through you in faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's always a struggle. We don't always share with you. We're pretty honest. Uh, I know you're honest with the women and women's group, and I'm honest. We're pretty honest, but we don't, we don't share everything with you. So if there's a time where we're like, have been fighting or, you know, frustrated or just emotionally exhausted, then, you know, I could get up there on Sunday and just just cry before you and talk about how emotionally exhausted I am. But there's a level where you're like, Lord, this has got to be bigger than me. So mm -hmm. by faith, you also bring people that yeah. word. And you're not trying to be duplicitous or hypocritical. You're just trusting that regardless mm -hmm. of how I feel or what's going on, mm -hmm. that we can move ahead by faith. Yeah. And, uh, and God rises up, doesn't he? He bridges mm -hmm. the gaps and he tears down the walls and yeah. Well, we found God actually speaks to us as we're speaking mm. to you. And so it's the encouragement of as we're speaking, we're like, oh, Lord, I think even last Wednesday, <clears throat> it was like that for me. I felt like, well, I'm going to not move on because God is saying something mm. to me. And I hope you don't mind listening <laughs> as I preach out what I believe God is saying to me. So Jen's expressed that for us kind of a rough day, just uh, trying to figure out how, you know, arguing. And by the way, when you argue, uh, both people think they're right often. And then we have to figure out uh, how do we just come together? Mm -hmm. And uh, and I just want you to know that that's, those are the people we are as we come to you in faith. Um, it's faith is something you have to exercise in every season of your life. Amen. And there's been another level to it, of course, <clears throat> in this last year. Uh, but we're we're going to look at uh, faith and go through the Hebrews 11 passage. And I just kind of want to, as we mm -hmm. go along, just to stop and give thoughts and to meditate upon this. I asked you guys to read that as well. Uh, we did it on Sunday. But I'd encourage you to read uh, again. And particularly last week, we focused in on the concept that out of nothing, God created. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the author of Hebrews is clearly wanting us to know um, that all this faith activity that follows in the passage, mm -hmm. uh, nothing needed to be in place, but God's will and our faith. Amen. God speaks and we say yes and amen. And as God, you know, we say God spoke creation into existence, Yeah. but God speaks things into existence through us. Well, certainly if he can speak creation into existence and he can make everything beautiful that we see around us, he made that out of nothingness. He can certainly you know, work in, in our hearts and in our relationships and, and create that which we don't see yet. Right. Well, and he does. The idea is that God speaks, but the agency of his speaking as what he creates comes through us. Mm -hmm. He speaks families into existence and we partner. And, and there's this reality that, that comes forth. He mm -hmm. speaks healing and health into environments. And that comes through us living it out by faith. He speaks for his kingdom to advance and his will to be done. And that occurs through our willingness to Amen. live by faith. So actually God speaks 
and through us, we become an incarnation of Christ's spoken word. Mm -hmm. We are incarnations of the voice of God, that God speaks, and then it is taken on flesh through us. You, my friend, the very word of God, the very will of God is incarnated through how you live out your life. And for this coming week, it's that powerful and that sacred that God right now might be speaking a word, Mm. speaking a word of, I want to bring this and do this. And that word will be incarnated through you. That means it'll take on flesh as Christ uh, lived the spoken word of the Father, whatever the Father says I do through the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. that same agency is occurring through the Holy Spirit. God is hovering over us and he's speaking things into existence. And then that word is lived out, it's incarnated, and what was not suddenly becomes. What is not seen is suddenly seen. And so we must be open uh, by faith Mm -hmm. and through faith, because as Hebrews says in the beginning of Hebrews 11, is that when nothing existed, God spoke something out of nothing. So right now, this opens us up to all the possibilities We don't take an assessment of, well, what seems to be working or not working? Mm -hmm. Where does there seem to be something created? It can literally be this. There's nothing that we can see that's created in that area. But by faith, we're going to open ourselves up to God's voice because God might want to speak into that person, that relationship, that community. There's a huge amount of hope in that. (laughs) There's an incredible amount of hope. And that's why, regardless of how you view America right now or what's going on or how disheartened uh, you might be about things, that God is still going to advance his kingdom by faith. Mm. And we're going to live by faith no matter what comes. And anything that comes isn't going to keep us from living by faith. So it doesn't matter what comes, that we still will have tasks to live by faith. And we will die in faith, whether we're old men and women or young men and women. We're going to die in faith. That means we're going to be living for things that we haven't not yet seen, unless Christ returns. And then that will be a certain death as far as the sense that the last thing we did here, a greater thing arrives when Christ returns or we return to Christ. So with that, we're going to go into uh, some of the scriptures in Hebrew. And I don't know how long I'll be in. We'll be in the tiny box, but we'll see. Uh, So we have, again, the Greek word there, pistis for faith. And I love the concept as it comes from to persuade or to be persuaded. And we know with spiritual gifts in Romans 12, 3, uh, Paul says, For through the grace given me, I say to everyone among you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, <clears throat> as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. Amen. <clears throat> so the idea is that God has given you a measure of faith mm-hmm. to exercise. Mm-hmm. So he's not an unloving God or a demanding father who mm-hmm. calls us to do something we can't do. Right. And he's not like, <clears throat> oh, some of you can, some of you can't. Or <laughs> So it just depends on what we're called to do. Mm-hmm. And I think it's even some of you might be in relationships where some person doesn't seem to have as much faith as you do. Are there? But that's not the issue. You're supposed to do what God has called you to do. So the measure of faith you have, mm-hmm. you're supposed to exercise that. Mm-hmm. Regardless of the other person, they'll do what God calls them to do. I'm realizing I'm losing my voice as I'm talking, so <laughs> we'll see how this works. I don't think we have any liquid with us here, do we? <coughs> so you can tell we do not uh, edit these things. But let's get into Hebrews 11 here. <clears throat> and uh, this is in the NASB. <clears throat> I can go ahead and read that. How far do you want me to go? Well, I'm, we're going to stop as we go, or you can stop okay. when anything rises up, and we're just going to make it through Hebrews 11 during this time. But as we're reading this, I want you actually to believe that God is going to speak new revelation into your life. Amen. I want you to open yourself mm-hmm. up to the full measure of the faith that God wants to provide you. That's faith to believe for miracles, mm-hmm. for new creation in any area of your life. So don't just limit it. Open it up. And let God show you if it's just dark and nebulous and mm-hmm. you see nothing, God can speak things into existence. Or you might see some areas where you think God is moving and God is saying, yeah, but you haven't begun to see mm-hmm. what I'm going to create until you live by faith. Amen. So, read them. Now, faith <laughs> is the certainty of things hoped for, a proof of things not seen. For, it is, <laughs> for by it, the people of old gained approval. By faith, we understand that the world has been created by the word of God so that what is seen has not been made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain. 
through which he was attested to be righteous, God testifying about his gifts and through faith, though he is dead, he still speaks. Okay, and I just want to stop on that. Is like We're not going to look at all these, but uh, with Cain and Abel, well, how did Abel express faith? And mm. we know in the offerings that Cain gave a choice portion. Mm -hmm. He gave the best of the first, the first mm -hmm. and the best. While Cain just gave a part of, for his yeah. offering, it was just some, it was just a part of it. And uh, how is that a faith expression? Mm. Well, we, we know even with the crops that the crops seem to continue. And we know with, you know, you have, we have blueberries, blueberry plants, they come out every year. We're not afraid that it, we're not going to have blueberries. We're, they're pretty hard to wreck, at least where we're at, right? Uh, well, with Cain and Abel, their first fruit, these are really, when you think about even creation, they're not certain about everything. Mm -hmm. They're not certain about what's to come next. And so when they have their first fruit, mm -hmm. let's say if you're not certain, if you live in uncertain times, even the fact of, you know, we have, we can go to a store and get the produce and the food we need, but these are people who are living off the land, right? There's no rescue. There's no yeah. other person coming along. Mm -hmm. So what does Abel do? Abel gives God his best and his first. Mm -hmm. How is that a faith expression to give your best and your first to God? I mean, for me, that would be a faith expression of not knowing, is there going to be enough for me? Right. And even am I going to get to enjoy the fruit of my labors and the first fruit, the best fruit of my labors? I mean, there'd be something in me, even aside from my terrible motivation of, you know, wanting to keep things for myself, part of me would still want to take part of what I feel like I had created or invested in. Right. What first implies a second fruit or a third fruit mm -hmm. or a fourth fruit, but we all know that might not happen. Yeah. What if your first fruit is your only, the fruit? only fruit, right? Or what if your best fruit mm -hmm. is the good fruit and everything else that mm -hmm. comes after is not going to be good. So we know this concept, right? That the idea is, well, I want to save this for me because what if what comes next isn't mm -hmm. that good? Mm -hmm. I mean, that concept is yeah. just universal. It's we, we sometimes look at Cain as very selfish, but Cain really is reflecting what humans do. We're fearful. And just mm -hmm. in case God doesn't work out, I need to save some for myself. So I'll give something to God. I mean, going back to the whole blueberry <laughs> analogy, I mean, we've got a couple of small bushes and it's not like all the blueberries come in at once. They come in and you, you pick, you know, a certain amount of the blueberries, you pick off all of the blue ones. And if I'm being honest, my first response to picking that first batch of blueberries wouldn't be to, oh, who can I give these to? Right. I would maybe have in the back of my mind of, oh, I want to share my blueberries, but I'm going to wait, you know, until the second or third sort of wave of those blueberries come in. Let me get some of these in the freezer or let my family enjoy blueberry on pan blueberries on pancakes first. Now you're just making me hungry. <laughs> no, it is. The but reality, that would be my first. The yeah. joke is when you get produce from your neighbors, when they have too much, right? Which right, is right. fine, right? Yeah. If somebody brings over a zucchini and they, you know, they, a bunch of tomatoes because they're going to go bad. And, and that's good that we do that. There's a spiritual principles on that, letting people glean, mm -hmm. you know, the edges of the field. But this idea of giving God the first and the best, mm -hmm. That what Abel was saying is, one, I know where every good gift comes from. Mm -hmm. He's right away saying, this ain't about me, mm -hmm. that God has made me fruitful. Uh, two, he's saying, I trust that the Lord is going to take care of me. Yeah, I trust that as I give my first mm -hmm. fruit to you, that you'll give me more fruit. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, it's an alignment. I'm aligned with God. The good stuff in my life comes from God. And I trust God. Mm -hmm. I trust that God, what you, you give me, you're going to take care of me. You're yeah. going to provide. So I can give you my best and my first, and uh, you'll give me what I need. Whether we're talking about like actual resources, or if we're talking about our energy and our, you know, our love, our time, that those are all things that we can tend to hold on to dearly for fear of if we give, we're not going to have enough mm. to be sustained. It's the same idea with Sabbath, you know, the seventh day. One of the things, this is how Americans, here's how modern people will talk about the Sabbath. They'll say, you know, we need to relax. Life's pretty stressful. We need to take a break. We need to take a vacation. We need to rest and not work. So take a Sabbath. Well, you know, that that's true. But I don't think that was the original intention of the Sabbath. It is a day of rest. 
but think about the kind of rest it is. It's not necessarily a day of ease mm. or a day of comfort. It's a day of resting in the knowledge that God will provide. Mm -hmm. Because the Sabbath was commanded to people who lived daily. Yeah. Daily provision. Mm -hmm. They lived week to week, depending upon if enough water fell, they had water to drink. You know, mm -hmm. you, you think about living the Sabbath as they were wandering in yeah. the wilderness, right? Where they didn't have enough water to drink. But regardless of whether they had a bunch of food and a bunch of water or no food or no water, regardless mm -hmm. of whether they had peace or warriors all around them, God said, once a week, once every seven mm -hmm. days, I want you to do no work. Don't provide for yourself. Yeah. Don't build anything. Don't plant anything. Don't gather anything. In fact, that's what we do on the day off. We go work in the garden. Mm -hmm. We do like, don't do anything. Mm -hmm. If your, your kids' bellies are hungry, don't work that day. Mm -hmm. If there, you see warriors coming in on the horizon, don't prepare for the battle that day. Yeah, what an act of faith. Just wait. Mm -hmm. And I think Sabbath was taught this way, where a young child would look to his father or his mother and say, why aren't we gathering food right now? Why, why aren't we working? Uh, this is a diff, this is a terrible time. This is a time of famine. This is a time of, you know, the, the clouds have not opened up. There's been no rain. We should be mm -hmm. finding ways to protect ourselves. And the father or the mother would look at the child and say, God will provide. Mm -hmm. Our God is faithful. Amen. One seventh of the time. That means like one seventh of our productivity. We're not going to be productive, regardless of if we're in, you know, a time of plenty or in a time of want. Mm. That is far more than just rest. Mm. That's more than, you know, taking a vacation and yeah. putting your feet up. Right. And uh, that's a very active form of rest, isn't it? It's a commitment of faith. Mm -hmm. It's faith. Sabbath is faith. And why the author of Hebrews says basically in other places that we are now entered into a continual Sabbath rest. Uh, I think it's we're living in a continual mm -hmm. faith in the provision of God. Amen. It is completely a spirit led rest that God has done it. He's done enough. Mm. We're going to be expressions of his glory by faith. Amen. So Cain and Abel. And even though Abel and he says, even though Abel died that expression of faith, even though Cain murdered Abel, that faith is so powerful that it has created things throughout history. And that's very important. Cain's faith was written down in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. And Cain's, excuse me, Abel's faith. Uh, there's an expression of Cain's faith that's written down yeah. as well. But Abel's good offering is written down in the Bible. And then those who followed, and mm -hmm. before it was written down, it probably even told us stories, that as those stories were told, it increased the faith of others. So his faith to give an offering, even though Cain tried to wipe him out, Cain could not wipe out his faith. Abel's faith is so powerful that it's affected every human on the face of the earth. Yeah. And that's why we live by faith, because faith goes beyond our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Faith goes into our children and our children's children. That's why the best thing you can pass on to your kids or to your friends or your relatives, your neighbors or your nation is faith, because faith mm -hmm. outlasts us. Amen. So let's continue on here, uh, because then I'll just done two verses <laughs> and it'll take us 10 years <laughs> to get through this, but that's OK. Uh, let's go here. So we did verse four. <clears throat> Why don't you read verse five? And I'm not going to stop at all these, but just as we go along. By way. faith, Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death. And he was not found because God took him up. For before he was taken up, he was attested to have been pleasing to God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For the one who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he proves to be, the, to be one who re rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God about things not yet seen, in reverence, prepared an ark for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance, and he left, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived as a stranger in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise. For he was looking for the city which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Amen. And, you know, we've looked at this before, mm -hmm. but 
Abraham's life doesn't make sense outside of the lives that come. Amen. In fact, Abraham goes into deep sleep and God is like, you know, it's going to be 400 years till you see this really happen. 400 years. So Abraham's life is he lives by faith. Even mm -hmm. the concept is we kind of take this for granted. He says Abraham lived in tents. Mm -hmm. That by faith, he decided in my life, I'm never going to settle down. We're never going to just build a house and settle down and have our compound. And, and in those mm -hmm. cultures, even more, <clears throat> it would be, if you see this when you go to Israel, um, people build their house and then they build onto their house for other family members. Mm -hmm. It's the similar idea of in my father's house, there's many rooms. Uh, that's the same kind of idea. And so he was not able to even build. That's a sign that God's going to mm -hmm. bless our family. We find our land. We build a house on it, and then mm -hmm. we build a house for our kids and our grandkids, and we expand mm -hmm. on, and that's a sign that God is going to bless us. So even though he received a promise yeah. uh, from God, he didn't yeah. He didn't settle. He literally knew that his whole life was going to be by faith, yeah. that if he stopped and just made it about his provision, mm -hmm. his house, his property, yeah. that the ultimate promise of faith that God had given to him wouldn't come about. It wouldn't make sense to me if God said, look at the sky, look at the stars, and that's how many descendants you're going to have. I'm going to make a people out of you. But then God said, oh, and just live in the tent because you need to be able to be prepared to like pick it up and keep moving whenever yeah. I ask to keep moving. Like don't put down any kind of sense of security on this earth and the promises that I've even told you about, but yet you know, you're going to have all these descendants and security somehow, eternal security. And we, and we could look at Abraham's life, you know, as Abram, his name was exalted father. That's his name. Mm -hmm. and he has no children. And then uh, God comes to him and he still doesn't have any children and says, now I want you to be called Abraham, which yeah. means father of multitude. Right. And so he goes out to all the people as an old man mm -hmm. and says, my new name is father of multitude. I guarantee the servants are whispering to each other and like, Father mm. Multitude, what, what's God? In this guy's delusional. Yeah. yeah. He exalted father, doesn't even have any kids. And by the way, the things he's tried are not working. Mm. And so uh, now father of multitudes. And so the, the procreation part, Abraham lived by faith, mm. but he also lived by faith that these promises go beyond my life. Yeah. They're, they're bigger than my life. I'm not mm. living... That idea alone, would anybody even follow a Christianity like that? Let's just be honest. I, I've pastored for a while. I know very few people who are living for a life beyond their mm. own, maybe for their kids. But are you living for uh, kids, grandkids, great grandkids? I'm living for future generations, mm. that kind of a faith, that I'm just laying it all down for something bigger than myself. Like that never settling, like, yeah. well, I could do this and it would help me, but it's not going to help what God wants to do through generations. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you have made those decisions. Absolutely. Yeah. But again, Abraham is living for something he does not see. Yeah. And, and he's not living for the short term. Mm -hmm. He's living for the long term eternal perspective. There's so much more we could say in all these things, but let's move on here. Uh, okay, verse 11, I think, is where we're at. By faith, even Sarah herself received ability to conceive even beyond the proper time of life, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, even from one man and one who was as good as dead as that, that, that there were born descendants who were just as the stars of the heaven in number and as the, as the innumerable grains of sand along the seashore. I love there too, that sometimes when we talk about Sarah, we don't talk about her role in mm. this, that God makes a promise to her. Uh, but it says here, the, the authors of, of Hebrews says, there was a faith that allowed her to receive, that God was able to conceive in her. Mm -hmm. There's a partnering there that I think is pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah. That at some level, she had to welcome the promises mm -hmm. of God yeah. by faith. Yeah. And I think even implied in that, which you might not think about is they're older and mm -hmm. would, and we'll just, I don't know how many kids are listening, but they're older and she was still sexually active with her husband at an old age with the idea that a baby would come <laughs> out of this experience. So there was a partnering there. You understand that concept that there could have been an idea of, you know what? And even fr frankly, Abraham had not been the best 
husband. Mm. And there's a part of her who could just said, I am not open to any of this. Mm -hmm. I, you know what? We'll take care of this and we'll you, you realize the other ways that Abraham tried to have children, all these things. And in, in the end, it's just like, mm -hmm. um, still, I am, think about the willingness, the, mm -hmm. the, even the heartache and the pain of that, the concept of who is barren and who can, who's, mm -hmm. you know, the accusation, whether it's from within or from without of what, you know, the reason God's promises are not taking place is because, you know, w w you can see those mm -hmm. accusations. Yeah. And yet by faith, she was willing to allow for life to still flow through her. Mm, amen. And that's a powerful thing that, is powerful. that she was willing to say, I, I'm going to entrust myself and trust mm. my body mm. that God could do something through me. Amen. And that's a true. And I just love that the author of Hebrews honors that. Yeah. It's not just Abraham believing there's a partnership right. here that had to mm -hmm. happen. There's even having a child at an yeah. old age. Um, the consequences of that, the yeah. pain, the, the dangers of that. Mm -hmm she had faith. Amen. All these died in faith without receiving the promises, but having seen and welcomed them from a distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own. And indeed, if they had been thinking of that country, which they left, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And this is such a sticking point for yeah. the American church. Yeah. Um, we should care about any environment we're in. Christians are supposed to even know in First and Second Timothy and Titus that we're supposed to be uh, well respected by outsiders. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to be seen as the best citizens, blameless, like pastors are supposed to be blameless with outsiders, not with Christians, but with outsiders so that we're seen as gratefully, you know, respected. So when it comes to how we engage our, our government, how we engage systems of justice, like we should be very much engaged and very much care. And the things we do should make us blameless with outsiders. People who are not Christians would say, wow, I, I want to be like Christians. Christians handle politics in such honorable ways. Christians handle politics uh, mm -hmm. in ways that bring honor to God. They are blameless in my eyes. But here's a bigger thing. Regardless of these things that we work at, mm -hmm. when we live by faith, we're not working for this country. We're working for God. Mm -hmm. uh, a bit, it's not about America. Mm -hmm. And we just have to understand that, right? I, I, I don't know, is there a map in heaven? Maybe there's a map in heaven. But I guarantee you that God's map has no borders. No. We're not all different colors of <laughs> countries up there. We can talk about where, where the concept of the only area where there's some mapping that might occur is when it comes to Israel and Jerusalem mm -hmm. and the holy city. But even in that, mm -hmm. we're told that there's this true temple that now is in our heart and true Israel is wherever Christ is exalted. Mm -hmm. But I'll just tell you, like with North America, there's no Mexico and then the U S and then Canada and God's love and God's passion and his heart mm -hmm. is as much for Mexico as it is for America, as it is for Canada. Mm -hmm. There's not an inkling in God where he's more concerned about the well-being of Americans as he is uh, Mexicans or uh, in, in, work your way down or work your way up on the map. It also says that, you know, to be living by faith for a country or a city that <laughs> isn't even seen yet. So God not only doesn't see things the way they, the way we do and the way they are here on earth, God sees things in a way that we can't even see yet. Amen. So it's a better city, a better country. It's an eternal it's a, it's a city or a country with, with eternal values and, and mm. you know, eternal rewards. Well, and I think that's true of not only what God does on earth, but what mm. our, our, our ultimate eternal future yeah. will be. That so often humans try to work for what was. Mm -hmm. And we get afraid when what, what was changes. But yeah. God asks us to work for what is not yet seen. Mm -hmm. And so we're not trying to get back to a time or a place when everything was great. We're actually trying to have his kingdom come and his will be done. Mm, amen. And that means we have to have our hearts continually mm. open to, Lord, is there something you want to create in me amen. and create in my wife, create my family, where an expression of the kingdom is expressed on earth that people mm. have not 
seen yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then ultimately, I am working for the kingdom of God to come as much in my Canadian mm -hmm. brothers, my my Russian Christians friends. I, if I, I don't have any Russian Christian friends, at least in Russia, but whatever, my Christian mm -hmm. brothers and sisters around the world, if they're in China, if they're in India, uh, mm -hmm. if they're in Mexico, when it comes to our citizenship, we have the same citizenship. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's no aliens. There's no illegal aliens. They, we have the same citizenship. Mm. And what matters more is that I'm partnering with those brothers and sisters in the advancement of God's mm. kingdom. That takes precedent over any nationalism. Mm. It takes precedence over any earthly concept of kingdoms and borders and boundaries. Mm. Uh, I, my allegiances are to thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And my allegiances are to live by faith. Mm -hmm. And that's why you know, sometimes people talk about standing with Israel and, you know, the concept of standing with people who, who believe in God and, 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 you know, are you know, doing moral right things and pursuing the kingdom of God. That's true. But we're supposed to stand with anywhere that God is moving. So our Pakistani and Christians, we stand with them. Mm -hmm. We stand with uh, Christians all over the world in Iraq and Israel mm -hmm. and everywhere. Yeah. And then even those who aren't Christians, we come in with what? The purpose of bringing the good news of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. because the kingdom that we're working for is a reconciling kingdom. Yeah. So we're not threatened by an outsider mm -hmm. because we see an outsider as new territory for the kingdom of yeah. God to advance. And we're asking others then to see something by faith yeah. that they don't yet see. And this is by faith. Yeah. And uh, so I'm not going to convince you. And, and I think this is one of our struggles. It's like, I can tell you why something's good or not. And you can tell me why something's good or not. But we're called to live by faith. And it means what is not seen. So we can see a territory and see like, man, that is just nothing but darkness. Mm -hmm. You can see countries where, where mm -hmm. the witness of Christ is not remotely welcomed. And we can go, well, you know, what's the use? Yeah, but or that's where we're not <laughs> doing the persuading God is giving us the persuasion. He is persuading us in our hearts by faith. That's that's what faith is, to be persuaded. Amen. But it's by God, not because of anything that we're saying, but because you have relationship with the Lord and through the Holy Spirit, and you've got the word you know, to, to rest on, and um, you are pers persuaded. You know, I think about it. I'm not going to talk about it long, but uh, Jason uh, Kanker, who goes to this church, uh, Jason, uh, my brother-in-law and your brother, uh, before he was a Christian, I remember thinking, I don't know how to connect with this kid. And he was younger at the time in high school. And then I, I couldn't connect with him at any level. And I was playing these odds, like, you know, how close someone is to mm -hmm. receiving Christ. And, and I had this idea, like, yeah, man, he's just so in his own world, I'm never going to reach him. And then one day he just told us about how God is moving in his life. He showed up at our door, I think. And it just suddenly it was like, mm -hmm. what? And God got a hold of him and he gave his life to Christ and it transformed his life. The, mm -hmm. the things that are beautiful and right and pure and holy and Jason come from the transforming good news of Jesus Christ. He's, you know, he's a, I, he imaged God in just his existence, but God did beautiful, wonderful mm -hmm. things through him. But I remember telling Jen, I'm like, we, we need to never play the odds and play the odds is like, I mm -hmm. think that horse is going to win. I think that person's kind of Christian and they seem to be mm -hmm. kind of open to the kingdom, mm -hmm. but that's not how God works. Yeah. By faith, we can believe that God will advance his kingdom and his purposes in people where we didn't think it was even possible. Amen. So I think we should open our hearts to have, uh, be open to that faith, to pray for people that you think are hopeless. You know, and frankly, you know, when people think they're, when we think they're close, that doesn't mean they're even closer yeah. either. It, it might just mean they're kind of religious. Mm -hmm. So let's have faith. And if specifically, if God is telling us to pray for certain people, to reach out to people, we would have faith that they can come to the good news of Amen. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Um, let's get through this. We at least make sure we get through it. <clears throat> so uh, verse 17, is that where we're mm -hmm. at? Okay. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and the one who had received the promises was offering up his only son, it was he to whom it was said, through Isaac, your descendants shall be named. He considered that God is able to raise people even from the dead, from which he also received him back as a type. But faith, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, even regarding things to come. 
by faith Jacob when he was dying as he was dying blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshiped leaning on the top of his staff by faith Joseph when he was dying made mention of the exodus of the sons of Israel and gave orders concerning his bones by faith Moses when he was born was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's edict by faith Moses when he had grown up refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the temporary pleasures of sin, considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By the way, I just want to stop there a second. Look what the author says. He says that he did this consider, considering the reproach of Christ greater riches mm -hmm. than the treasures of Egypt. Well, yeah. he didn't know about Christ then. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Yeah. But I think actually what the author is saying here, one, he's, he's tying into this is how we live by faith, but that every faith act, even though mm -hmm. they didn't understand it, was making room for Christ to be revealed yeah. on earth. Looking to the future promise. And I think that's true of us, mm -hmm. that God is asking you to do faith things that might not even make sense. Mm -hmm. Like you just, I don't know, I just think I'm supposed to do this. But anything that is done in faith ultimately welcomes Christ Amen. into the equation. Amen. And I want to encourage you with that. So don't yeah. downplay these faith things that you might be like, I don't, I just, mm -hmm. you know, I think we're just supposed to give that person some money or I think we're just supposed to go, uh, you know, visit this per or whatever it is, mm -hmm. or just something, you know, I, I think we're supposed to prepare a room for this or, mm -hmm. and you don't even know why you're doing it, but you just feel led by faith that you're supposed yes. to do this. Amen. I believe it's the same thing here. You are making mm -hmm. room for Christ, Amen. even Amen. though you might not know it. Amen. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he persevered as though seeing him who is unseen. There you go. Yeah. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as through dry land, and the Egyptians, when they attempted it, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after the Israelites had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab did not perish along with those who were disobedient after she had welcomed the spies in peace. And what more shall I say for the time for time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, from weakness were made strong, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to fight to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured, not accepting their release so that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others experienced mocking and flogging and further chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were put to death, but with the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, people of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts, on mountains, and sheltering in caves and holes in the ground. All these people, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised because God had provided something better for us so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. Now, this is one of the most radical endings here. Uh, one, we could have stopped in all those areas, right? But the author of Hebrews is saying, mm -hmm. our life is perfecting their faith. Mm -hmm. Our life. And that's why faith is very sacred. Mm. You're not your own. Mm. We've been brought into something much bigger than us. Mm -hmm. And their willingness, and this, he says that so strongly, yeah. people have died so that you can exercise faith. People have surrendered their lives. Mm. They've given up the promises of this world so that the ultimate expression of the kingdom of God mm. could be expressed through us. This is a very kind of... Um not super like super spiritual important maybe analogy but we were watching a documentary on Kansas State last night their football program um, and the coach was talking to a locker room full of young men young players who were getting to enjoy a winning season finally after decades of not winning and he'd built the program with the season before and the season before that 
And those players, those previous players did not get to enjoy the fruits of their labor. They worked their rear ends off. They followed the training regimens. They put in the time and the effort and didn't have winning seasons. And the coach was telling this now winning team that your winningness is built on the backs mm -hmm. of all of those who came before, who listened, who were willing to put in the time and the effort and the sweat and the tears. So don't, mm -hmm. you know, don't go forward thinking that this is just something that you're doing on your own. Remember what you're doing is actually honoring those who came before well, and a, they did it for you. That's a great focus. Kansas State was a laughing stock of football, the worst football program in the U.S. as far as a major conference football team. They had gone like two seasons without winning a game and they brought in a new coach and they'd brought in several new coaches up to that point who was like, we're going to turn this around. And this documentary focused mm -hmm. in on that class that really didn't see the fruits mm -hmm. of this transition. They were just the transition. In the first year, they won their first game. And the next year, I think they won like four or five games. And then the final year of that group, they won seven games out of four. And most of those players didn't get to go to a bowl game. Mm -hmm. They didn't get any praise. But then after that, the team became a dominant force in football. And that's such a power. I thought it was so powerful that they were honoring the people that we don't always honor. Mm -hmm. We honor the person who gets the rewards, mm -hmm. who you know wins the trophy, who gets the national championship. But the ones who didn't even get to see the reward were giving so much honor to the coach because they felt honored to still get to serve under that person who knew the calling and knew the, you know, could see and have vision and have faith in something that wasn't quite yet. Well, and one of the things that it meant something to them is it meant something to them that they know what they did allowed mm -hmm. for a program to prosper later on. Yeah. And regardless of whether you like Kansas State or football, uh, that's the other things. Right now, some of us are maybe questioning, what does it matter? Mm -hmm. And uh, I could see that even like, what does it matter? I don't know. It's not helping in my relationships mm -hmm. and it's all the same and every, but that's not how we're going to live. Yeah, amen. You might've gone, you haven't got a win. This feels like loss of hurt, mm -hmm. loss of loss. One win matters. Amen. One step forward in faith matters because mm -hmm. we can build upon faith. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm asking you to do amen. is to live by faith. Yeah. That's what we're doing. <laughs> amen. One, one win matters. Mm -hmm. And I want you to trust that the gates of hell are not going to prevail. And the story of eternity is going to be Amen. from faith to faith to faith, from glory to glory to yeah. glory. And you want to be a part of that story. Amen. You want to yeah. be a part of the story of Abraham and Isaac mm -hmm. and Sarah. Mm -hmm. And you can. And they lived with a faith where they're passing the baton on to us. Mm -hmm. Right Amen. now, in this season, this season, not the season you imagine. Mm -hmm. Not the season you wanted. This season, they're passing it on to you. And you can either run with faith or you can say, no, mm -hmm. it's going to stop with me. And you're not going to say it's going to stop with me. You're going to say it's going to continue. Amen. That's and right. when you continue in faith, I think you do feel the strength that Abraham felt, and Sarah felt. Mm -hmm. Long-term, energetic, transformational mm -hmm. faith, character-changing faith. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank, thank you for you, Lord, your presence, Lord. Thank you. Lord. We thank you that faith doesn't have to be, uh, mm. oh, doesn't need a hype man, doesn't need someone to hype mm. up the crowd. So I just like in a really boring way here right mm. now, I'm just going to trust your faith thank that you, you give us, the measure of faith you give us, that when we exercise that, mm. Thank you. Amazing things happen. Amen. Lord, we do. We start with just laying our first fruits before you, our time, our energy, our very being. We lay that before you. Thank you, Lord. We trust that to you. Thank you, Jesus. I place Thank everything you, before you, Lord. I place each person before you. Mm -hmm. I place Evergreen Church in Thank your hands. You, it's all in your hands, not a part of it, mm -hmm. all of it in your hands. Thank you, Jesus. We Thank place you. our lives in your hands. And we ask that you would show us the measure of faith you've given us. Thank you, Jesus. And then we're going to exercise that faith. Amen. Thank and Lord, right now for each of us, if there's a part of that faith that we're storing up and we're, we're afraid to exercise, we're committing to say, no, I'm going to every last drop, every bit of it, 
I'm not going to save any of it up. I'm just the faith that you've given me. I am going to mm. activate it. The measure of faith I'm going to live in. Thank you, Lord. So we welcome every little drop of faith. Thank you. Every Lord. little crumb of faith. Every little inkling right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And we appreciate all you veterans, everyone who has served our country. We especially thank you, think of you today and just thank you. Thank you for, for dedicating your energy and your time to defending our, our truths and our freedoms. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. We do. We love you. We thank you. Uh, we pray that we'll live to honor uh, the peace that you've brought our nation mm -hmm. in the way we handle ourselves today. And I just want to say uh, my lovely wife here was holding my hand during our time mm -hmm. here and squeezing my hand. And I just love, get, we love being able to do this together because we either have to be all in in faith mm -hmm. or not. And it is a privilege that uh, we get to do this with you. <laughs> yeah, we don't thank take you. that lightly. Okay. All right. Love you guys. Make room for the Lord. Goodbye. <laughs>